All right, everyone, we're going to get started. I left a little bit of time for folks to log in, but welcome and thank you for joining us for our webinar on how to boost productivity with Microsoft Teams. Today we have a very special guest with us who works for Chorus Docs, who knows Microsoft Teams inside and out and can tell you all the best ways to use Teams with Chorus Docs. So Shay Van Heerden is there in the other picture up top. She's our SVP of Customer Success. And she's going to host today's webinar. Um, but as we proceed through the content, if you all have any questions as we go through, there's a little chat section on the GoToWebinar. Just throw your question in there. And if it's related to content Shay's covering at the moment, we'll kind of interrupt and cover that. Otherwise, I'll try to save most of the Q&A until the end. OK, I know some folks are still rolling in, but we will go ahead and get started. And I will hand it over to Shay. And I'll be back in, Shay, with questions as they pop up. Thanks, Jen. You hear me okay? All right. Welcome to the session today, everyone. Um, I'm really excited to be able to share just some of the simple ways um, to help you guys leverage, I guess, your team's investment. Um, more specifically, though, for content managers and collaborators. I think that's where we're going to focus today. Uh, most of you have probably uh, use Teams to chat to your colleagues, you know, you hop on calls, maybe share a few files around. Um, but today we're going to look at how to use Teams to kind of um, organize and centralize and secure access to content. So Teams comes uh, actually jam-packed with some of those uh, uh, content and collaboration features. Um, but more importantly, how to collaborate on content with subject matter experts to keep that content fresh and accurate. So we'll also explore some of the version control features that we can leverage um, and some of the other uh, uh, things that you may not know that team has, Teams has uh, to actually manage content. Um, I'm going to kind of end off with a, 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 extending the solution um, with Chorus Docs. So some of you have Chorus, either on Breeze or Content Hub. Um, but I'm, I'm going to end off with how to take that Teams environment and plug it into Chorus, um, extending the solution, essentially giving you a really powerful way to bring all of your content into the Office applications that you already work in today um, and just personalizing it uh, as you use it. So I, I think I was uh, meant to share my <laughs> agenda slide with you, but that's kind of what we're, we're going to uh, run through. Before we uh, dive right into that, I think we're going to kick things off with a poll, right, Jen? Yes, we are. Awesome. All right. I'm going to put the poll up on the screen so everybody should be able to see it. If you can take a second and let us know where you store your content today it will help us a little bit with our session. And we're getting some votes in here. So the choices are sort of on your Computer, PC, desktop, OneDrive, places like that. You know, Microsoft SharePoint and Microsoft Teams is fairly popular with a lot of our customers. Google Drive, a homegrown solution or other content management system. And then, of course, if you're a client, maybe on Chorus Breeze or Chorus Docs. All right, still collecting some responses here. Okay, I think we're gonna close our poll and I don't know, Shay, how much you can see, but I will share the answers with you. So we ended up with 47% that are on my computer somewhere. So desktop or OneDrive. Uh, the big winner was 89%. And, and again, you can choose more than one, Microsoft SharePoint or Microsoft Teams. We had 11% on Google, nothing homegrown today, and then 42% on Chorus, Breeze or Chorus Docs. Awesome. All right. I think we're ready to move ahead. Okay. So with that, I'm going to end the slideshow here. And hopefully you can all see my Teams environment. All right. Let's just get rid of some of these browser, browser windows on my other screen here. Okay. So I'm using the browser version of Teams today. Um, it's most likely you're using the desktop uh, application. Um, they work the same way. Everything I show you today is completely transferable into any version of Teams that you have. So I have a blank environment here. I'm going to click on the Create Team. And I'm going to create a team that is going to be used to house my content. 
There's a couple of different uh, options here. I'm going to do one from scratch. Um, and then we get kind of uh, the ability to choose access. So this is one way in which we can secure the team. Um, either people will need permission to join or anyone in your org can join. And then there's this third option um, that basically automatically enrolls all of your uh, contacts in your organization into the team. So this is where we first get a glimpse of some of the uh, secure ability to secure content. Um, and depending on your needs, how many people are contributing, remember this solution is for uh, collaboration around content in terms of keeping it fresh um, and accurate. So this is collaboration with SMEs and that's what the solution is focused on. So, uh, you know, we can make that private. I'll go ahead and make that mine public for now. And I'll give this a team a uh, name. I'll just call this our content and we'll hit the create button. So that'll go ahead and create the team for me. Um, and then we can start adding members to uh, this. I'm going to add one member just to kind of show you. But here's where I'll go ahead and add all of the um, collaborators that are actually going to be a part of my team and hit the close button. So as a, a default, you'll get a general channel um, for, for your team. And I'm not going to use the general channel. That's a nice channel to just talk about content, maybe gaps that you have in your content. People can maybe uh, um, have access to this channel to request uh, new pieces of content that, they, that may be missing. Um, but I'm going to create new channels to house the different types of content that I have. Um, and the type of content I have, I'm a professional services uh, uh, in the professional services industry. And my organization um, focuses heavily on business consulting solutions. So um, I, I've got a lot of content around the solutions that my business offers. I've also got a lot of case studies and those are the that's the type of content that I'm going to bring into this teams um, into this team and create a channel for each of the types of content. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a channel, add a channel and I'm going to call this solutions. And you also have the ability to add specific people to specific channels for access. So there's another level of access um, or security that we can apply uh, as we create these channels as well. With each channel that we create, we get by default a post uh, where you can have conversations and we also get this files aspect of solutions. Every time you, if you've ever sent a file to a, a team member, um, you will you you may just attach it in the post, but it's actually saved in this files area over here. And this is the part of Teams that we're going to leverage uh, to actually manage our content is the, are the files section. And I'm going to open up a, a browser window on my desktop. I have some content, and to get this content up, I'm going to go to my solutions folder. These are just Word documents on my desktop. I'm going to highlight them all and very easily just drag and drop them into the files area. And that will very quickly upload those items to that channel. So that's the first step. Uh, so now we have this ability to house content. Uh, we want to add some columns to manage this, this content within the, within the channel. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come across and I'm going to add a subject matter expert in my organization that looks after each piece of content. So I'm going to add a column called a person and we'll just call this SME. I like to turn on the profile photos. It just makes it um, a little uh, a, a nicer visual for when I'm managing my content. There's a couple of more options down here. You can allow multiple people if, uh, to, to manage a single piece of content. You can require that this has to be filled in every time someone drops a file in here. So there's other uh, options over there. And I'm going to hit the Save button and add a subject matter expert. Uh, to edit that, the team ha has a really great edit in grid view option. And this kind of turns the file area into like an Excel spreadsheet, which is really, really handy when you're uploading content and applying metadata to the content in, in a kind of a bulk way. So if I flip that on, you'll see that I have now the ability to come and pick a person. So I'll put my cursor in there and I'll just search for myself. And this is going to search through your entire organization's directory 
And I'll be able to then either copy paste that down using control C and control V into other cells. So like that, or I can grab the bottom corner of the cell and drag it down like you would an Excel file. And I'm gonna allocate some of these uh, to Paolo, make him the subject matter expert. Remember, he's one of the contributors in my team. Once I've done that, I can exit the grid view and it'll finish up the application of those subject matter experts and close that out for me. So now I have a person who's responsible for each piece of content. I'm gonna add another column and I'm gonna call this expiry date. So what we wanna do is we wanna know or be notified of when content it should be reviewed. And so we'll give it an expiry date. If you wanna use next review start date or any other language that may help you identify content that needs to be looked at, um, you can name that whatever you want. And again, there's some other settings. You can include the time if you need to. There's friendly formats, et cetera. I'm just gonna save that. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Flip this open in um, grid view, and I'm gonna apply some expiry dates. So let's uh, put some expired content. Let's say these guys should have been um, kind of uh, reviewed by the 1st of September, and I'll make some of Paolo's expired as well. And let's put these as 1st of October. So those are not yet expired, maybe coming up. And I can use my copy paste and drag functionality to apply all that metadata. And now I have an expiry date to work with. The last field that I'm gonna add is a choice field. And a choice field is very handy. In my case, remember I'm selling um, solutions, uh, business consulting solutions. So I wanna tag each piece of content with the solution that it's related to. And that's just gonna help me kind of create uh, uh, create views and, and filter and sort my content uh, by the solution. Now this could be your product, this could be a service maybe that you offer. Um, so however you need, remember this is all part of um, managing the content. So whatever columns you need, you can add them in any manner to these files and then associate them and tag them for your content management purposes. So I'm gonna choose three um, of my uh, solutions. I've got operations, organization, and sustainability. I'll hit the save button, same thing, flip over into grid view, and I'm just gonna randomly tag these. Obviously, they will not be accurate, but I think for the uh, benefit of this demo, we'll just give a couple of guesses and exit the grid view. And now we have a really awesome visual um, of that, uh, of the, the, the solution that the documents are, are all talking to or explaining. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and create another channel. So I'm gonna add a channel and this time I'm gonna create a channel for my case studies. Hit the add button and I'm having trouble Okay, let's try that again. And let's hit the add button. And that'll create a second channel for me. Move over to the files area. You can see that the case studies library has also now got my columns that I added into the solutions library, which is great because I can leverage, I can build them once on one library and have them apply across the board. And I'm gonna do the same thing, go to my case studies, where I, wherever I have them, and just drag and drop them into the case studies channel, and then I can go ahead and apply the metadata there as well. All right, so that's how we're centralizing and securing our content. Um, next, we're gonna talk about the organizational features. So you've seen a little bit of that in the metadata, um, but let's look at some of the things that you can do with the views inside of your Teams channel. So I'm gonna go back to my solutions, across to my files, um, and I'll just show you a couple things that you can do. So you can create views in the top right-hand corner, you'll see this all documents drop down. This is known as a view. And if I drop that down, the views kind of sit in the middle over here. I only have one view, it's the default view and it's called all documents. And I can change this view so that when I come into my solutions channel, into my files, 
I see exactly what I want to see. And I can do things like grouping by solution. So if we group by solution, you see it changes the view and it actually collects all the files underneath each solution for me. Really handy um, function. Another one is I can group by expiry date and, and see exactly when my content is expiring. So the group by function um, is really neat and helpful. And that can be saved to that view so that it's always grouped when you land on that. We can also do things like format views to highlight certain things about the content. For example, if we want to highlight expiring content, we can go ahead and format the view by clicking on the format view button. Come down to conditional formatting over here. We can add a rule. And what we'll need to do is say, well, you know, this is the uh, uh, format that we're going to apply. It's a blue highlight um, with a darker blue text. Which columns or which row should I highlight and under what uh, conditions? So it's what we want to do is we want to say if the expiry date is on or before today, so it gives us the ability to say today, um, show the item highlighted. And you can go ahead and change this to maybe make it red to stand out and hit the Save button. And that view will now be saved for you um, every time you come in or every time content comes up as expired, it's going to highlight it uh, in this red for us so that it stands out to you. So you can do all sorts of things like that. I'll just turn that off for the moment. All right, um, so that, that's how we can configure the current view. But you can create multiple views to do multiple things. I think um, if we wanted to create a view, for example, that only showed us the uh, a single solutions content, we'll come to the all documents list, we'll save the view as, and we'll give it a new name. So I'll call this oh, organization content. And I'll make it public. That means that everybody in my team who has access to this content will also have access to this view. You can turn that off if you want to create yourself private views um, that you use for your uh, purposes. Um, but if you make it public, everyone's going to get access to that view. So I've created a new view. If I click down on the drop down, you'll see I've got this new view called organization content. And what I can do now is manipulate this to say, um, Maybe I want to filter and I only want to see my organization content. And that now changes that view so that every time I want to see my organizational content, I can click on that view and it's going to automatically apply that filter for me. And that's really handy if you want to see a selection or a, a specific group of content based on any criteria, you can actually create the views um, and use them to navigate to that se segment really, really quickly. That's just a standard view where we're using a filter. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my default view, which is the all documents. And I'm going to create a view that only shows me my content, so content that I'm responsible for. Um, I think it's these, these first uh, uh, six pieces of content over here. This is called a dynamic view because I want to create a view that no matter who comes to this a uh, channel, if they're a subject matter expert, they're only going to see the content that they are responsible for. So it's dynamic in the sense that it's reading who's logged in and it's allowing that logged in person to see things that are only relevant to them. So I'll go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to save the view as, and I'm going to call this my documents. I'm going to make it public because this needs to be for everyone, every SME. So nothing's changed. I now need to go tell the view exactly what the criteria are. And to do that, I'm going to go to the SharePoint backend. Now, say SharePoint because underneath Teams, um, every time we create a team, we're actually creating in the cloud a SharePoint environment. And that SharePoint environment is what is powering Teams it's also what is allowing us to leverage some of these content management solutions. So if you want to stick to the basic stuff, you can do everything from within Teams, but there are some things that we will need to flip to the SharePoint backend to do, but it's really, really simple. 
to get to the SharePoint backend to alter this view, um, we're going to uh, go down to um, the view itself and we're going to edit the current view. So before we were formatting where we could apply things to highlight uh, in the actual view, this time we're going to edit the current view. And what that'll do is open up a new window for us in the browser and it's going to take us to the SharePoint backend. So if you're familiar with SharePoint, this will uh, be a familiar screen to you. If you're not, it's really simple. We're just going to scroll down. This is just a, a, a view, a list, or, or rather a, a page that is explaining all the columns that are available to you in that view and which ones are selected. We're going to come down to the filter option. And currently, it's set to show all items in the view. We want to change that to show items only where the subject matter expert is equal to me. And me is a reserved sort of word, but it's me is the logged in uh, user. And you'll see there's some explanation of you can use today or me as well um, in that uh, filter ability over there. You can also combine um, other criteria as well if you need to create more complicated views. So we have the option to expand using ands and ors, so some Boolean logic there to be able to uh, um, alter the views even further, which we'll come back to in a second. So scroll all the way back up. I'm going to click OK. And I'm just going to close that window that, that opened for me. And I'm going to hit the refresh button on my browser. And then I'm going to go down to the My Documents view. Once that loads for me. So here's my documents, and you'll see I only see my um, items. If this was someone else, like Paolo maybe logging in, when he went, if he goes to my documents, he's only going to see the list of content that is accessible to him from this view. He's absolutely able to flip back to all documents and see everything in the library, but this is really gonna help him um, uh, find the stuff that is only for him to kind of be concerned with and keep refreshed. I'm going to do one more thing to this view. I'm going to go back into the view, which is again going to open up a separate window. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to add an, an additional uh, condition here. I want to show all of my expiring documents. So if I say um, where the subject matter is, expert is equal to me, that's fine. And where the expiry date is less than or equal to, and I'm going to use the keyword today, which again is one of those dynamic keywords. So that's going to show me everything that's either expiring today or has already expired. Hit the OK button, close that window. Um, you can either refresh the browser. If you're not in the browser, all you need to do is change the view to some other view and then come back to the My Documents view. And you'll see now I only see the documents that are expiring or have expired. Um, and I won't see any of my uh, October documents there. I can only see the September ones. So that's kind of um, how we can organize and manage uh, content, um, or, or rather organize it so that we can manage it easier. We can serve up the correct segment of documents to subject matter experts uh, that have come in. Next, we want to create a, some sort of approval status, right? We don't want content to be used um, that, that is in a draft state or is busy a work in progress, or maybe it's new content that you haven't yet approved uh, for everyone to consume. Because we're using Teams under the hood, there's actually a built-in approval status for us that we can turn on. By default, it's turned off. And we're going to go turn it on and I'll show you what happens when we do that. So to do that, we've got to go to the SharePoint backend again, and we can click this button here, open in SharePoint to get there. As we do that, you'll see a SharePoint view of the same content. We'll go up to the little gear icon. We'll go to library settings, more library settings, and we'll come down to versioning settings. And there's an option right at the top do you require content approval 
for items that are submitted, in this case, items that are edited, we want to turn that on to say yes. And you'll see some of the settings that automatically tip, uh, 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 turn on at the bottom. Um, specifically, only users who can approve items should be able to see drafts in this library. And that's exactly what we want to achieve. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm just going to close SharePoint completely, um, refresh, or either navigate to a different view. And you'll see that there is now an approval status uh, column that has been automatically added uh, uh, for us. So we tell SharePoint to turn that on. Um, by default, the minute we do that, all the content that we've already put in the library is um, automatically approved. So you want to be careful that um, you're not, you know, when you first create this team, um, you want to make sure that all the content can be approved. Um, if you have existing content already, you probably want to go through that before turning that content approval flag on. And that now gives us the ability to work with uh, subject matter experts and actually have the content turn into draft as it's a work in progress and lock everyone out that's not supposed to be, be able to see, not supposed to access the work in progress documents or the co content that's either expired or, um, or, or is you know, needing, to, needing to be reviewed. All right, I'm gonna simulate sharing one of these documents with a subject matter expert. So that subject matter expert is Paolo, and I'm gonna take one of his documents over here, um, and I'm going to open it up. Now, by default, when you open a document in Teams, it opens up in the Teams uh, online sort of editor. And that's really the online word editor that's kind of coming up um, through here. I don't particularly like the online editor. I know it's not a popular tool and you don't have to. You can open this up in the desktop app if you like. But something I like to leverage when I'm managing content in Teams with subject matter experts is that I have the ability to have a conversation with a subject matter expert or anyone on this particular document. And that's the benefit of having your content in Teams or a benefit. So I can hit the conversation button and that flips open a window here and I can actually call out Paolo in Teams and ask him to review or add. So I'll just say, please review. And I'll push that into Paolo. The minute I do that, I actually have Paolo's Teams environment open up on another browser. So I'm gonna move Paolo's environment over onto mine over here. And you'll see Paolo got a couple of messages as I added him to our content um, team. Uh, he got a notification, but here's the review that I've just asked him for. So he got a message from me with a link to the document in Teams. All he has to do is open that up and he can engage with me um, through that conversation, or he can come, ahead, come and go ahead and do what he wants in here to actually review this document. So he can make some changes in the document. And again, he doesn't have to work in the uh, online version. He could have opened this up in his desktop app and achieved the same thing. Because your content is now stored in Teams, we can take advantage of the collaboration features. So you'll see that Paolo, when he's working on this document, can see that I'm already in the document. He can see where I am in the document. And as we work together, um, we can see where we are um, and what the, the changes are being made are. And, and we can work together. Microsoft allows up to 30 collaborators in a document at any single time. And so that becomes also really nice if you want to invite a couple of people into a document. Maybe they are working on different sections. So that's entirely possible. As he makes his changes um, and closes out the document, um, I'm going to close it on my end over here. And I'm going to go back to the files. The first thing you'll see is that the document has moved automatically into a pending status. And that means that there are changes that have to be approved before this new version of the document is allowed to be consumed by others in the organization. So for me to approve, I have the power to approve this content. For me to do that, I simply 
select the the item obviously i'm going to open it and i'm going to have a look at it and make sure that you know everything looks okay but i select that when i'm done and i go to the secondary menu down here and i have the option to approve or reject the content i can approve it click the approved status i can use a comment maybe this is an, a note as to what was changed um, and you know, or, or just some sort of a control, uh, a controlled note that allows us to capture any particular uh, um, things that are noteworthy about this particular update. And I'll click OK, and the document goes to approved, which is now accessible to everyone in my organization. It's that simple. Um, now, this is a very manual process, right? I've had to ping Paolo out to actually come into the document, give him the file, and he comes in. With Chorus Docs, we can, of course, automate this all for you. And in automating it, you'll, you'll still need to set it up in the manner that I've shown you, but Chorus can apply a workflow that runs on your team's environment that will automatically pick up the content and alert Paolo that a change or a review needs to happen. So, that's the automation piece that Chorus can bring to the solution. And this really just makes sure that a couple of days before it enters into that expiry, um, you know, Paolo is going to get an email or a Teams message, um, and he's going to have to action that. Um, and, th and that really just automatically makes sure that no content kind of gets to an expired status. The last thing I want to show you in Teams is the version controls. So I'm going to open the document that Paolo and I edited. I'm going to open that in the app. And I'm going to show you how we can look at the versions of this document inside of Microsoft Word. And the same goes for PowerPoint and Excel. So if I click on the title of the document, I'll see the version history button. If you have a slightly older version of Word, you might need to find it under file um, and info. There'll be a version history button here as well. But on the newer versions, Office 365, you'll see it at the top here. Click on version history. These are all the versions that have been um, a part of this file since the day we created it. And you can pick any version and use the open version button that's going to open up that previous version. And if you're not sure what changed, you can actually do a compare by clicking on the compare button over there. And Word has this amazing ability to show you exactly what changed, who changed it, um, the date, et cetera. And there's some pretty cool um, uh, markup that you can actually see uh, in this uh, kind of change management or comparison tool that comes with Word. And that's only made possible by the fact that the content lives in Teams, which is a collaborative area that supports versioning. If you like the version and you want to kind of roll back, you have the ability to then restore this version. And what that does is it overwrites the current file um, to make it the new, uh, uh, the new latest version of that file. So that's the versioning at play. I want to end off with uh, showing you how easy it is to push this and distribute this content into Microsoft Office with Chorus Docs. So I'm going to very quickly open up the Chorus Docs Content Hub environment. I'm going to go down to my content sources. I'm going to click on the Add button, and I'm going to point um, this content source to a SharePoint document library. And I'm going to call this Solutions, my Solutions Material. I need to come back to Teams, and I need to go um, back to the SharePoint environment. So I'm going to open in SharePoint, and all I'm looking for is the URL, the SharePoint URL, all the way up to the end of my team name. So I'm going to grab that, copy it, and come and paste that into the site URL. Give that a second, hit Next. I'm then presented with my Teams library, again, which is just SharePoint under the hood, and you're gonna find your channel content under our documents or the documents folder, um, which is uh, automatically created for us. And there's my solutions uh, file location, and I'm gonna hit the finish and let that set up. 
I'm going to create one more. And I'm going to create one for my case studies. Same URL. Hit the next button. And I'm going to come drop down and choose my case studies and hit the finish button. Just by doing that, what I've managed to do is connect my Teams content to Chorus. And by connecting it to Chorus, I now have all that content within all my Office applications. And let's just do one example of that. So I'm going to open up Word. Just get a blank Word document. Here's my Chorus Docs add-in. I'll flip that open. And if I go to my search page, I can see my solutions and my case studies. Expand solutions. And there are all the files that I was managing in my Teams environment. And I can use them to insert and work on any of my uh, RFPs, proposals, et cetera, any documents that I'm working on. This particular file that I used has a smart field in it. Um, and it is asking me for the client name. So I'll just put a client name in there and insert. Another benefit of course, of course, is that content can be customized um, and to be able to consume fields um, that can personalize the document. We can also have rules as well that can change the content depending on what you're using it for, depending on the opportunity that you're using, um, that you're using the content for. And we have access to all of our content. If we want to grab a case study, we can do that um, and flip over here. Same thing. We have a number of things we can do with the content in here. We can insert. We can favorite it. If we've got a favorite um, document that we always come back to. And this is really uh, the end user experience. So the content management is occurring inside the Teams area while the consumption and utilization of that content is happening through the add-in um, uh, uh, through Chorus Docs. So I know I went through all of this at kind of lightning speed. Um, I guess it really was to illustrate just how quick and easy it is to get your team's environment up. Um, and then, of course, to connect it to Chorus as well. Um, it, it, you know, to centralize and, and, and kind of distribute that personalized content. You don't need your IT. You really don't have to be terribly technical either. Um, these tools that we're using today, I think, were designed to be used by business users. And I think Microsoft have done a really great job of providing really comprehensive tooling to us inside of the applications that we already use and love. And that's a critical thing for Chorus. We make it our mission here to follow suit. Um, we don't want to introduce a whole other application into your uh, stack when we know you already work in PowerPoint or Word or Excel and Outlook. Um, and so we want to really integrate into what you already have. And that's, that's why we have the add-in. It's intuitive, it's simple, it's powerful, but most importantly, it's right there where you need it uh, and where you need your content. So that's a wrap from me. Um, I'm going to hand uh, well, I'm actually going to go back to my presentation and hand over back to Jennifer. Awesome. Thank you, Shay. That was great. And I actually have a few questions from the audience today. So maybe we'll go through those and then we can give everybody our uh, ebook that we sort of put together on this whole topic when we're all done. But um, yeah. so first question, and they all a little bit have the same theme. Please clarify for Chorus Docs users. We just moved from our content from Breeze to Chorus Docs, yep. which is moving it to the cloud. If we already have content loaded into Chorus Docs, does this mean we next need to move all of our content into Teams? No, so Teams is just one of the options that you have. If you have SharePoint um, or, you, or you, want, you prefer to use plain SharePoint, um, you can absolutely leave your content in SharePoint. Teams could be a secondary place that you have content. You know, we have a couple of clients um, where their marketing team loves to use Teams to collaborate. And so marketing kind of holds their content in Teams and we just connect straight into it from course in the way that I did at the very end uh, of the presentation. 
um, and, and the rest of the organization or the bid and proposal teams in that same company, they prefer SharePoint. So they use SharePoint to, uh, to manage their content and we connect straight into the SharePoint environment as well. So you can have multiple places that you store your content um, there's no need to take it out of SharePoint and put it into Teams unless you want to take advantage of those features in Teams um, that we saw today, like the conversation around a document, for example. That would be a benefit of having it in Teams. Perfect. Okay, a comment kind of, I think this is probably a relatively common comment, but we yeah. also have issues with people who access documents via a link versus directly into Teams. And then for some reason, autosave stops working on the link documents at some point and the data seems like it gets lost. <laughs> okay. All right, so my experience with autosave is um, that it's dependent on your settings in Word. So you have the ability to turn autosave on and off. So that's definitely something I would start by exploring. Um, the, the, the folks that are having trouble, what, what are the autosave settings? Um, there's some other adjustments that you can make to your Word settings to kind of, uh, um, you know, address challenges like that. So I'd say that, you know, you can also run into issues like that if people are using radically different versions of Word. So if someone in your team has uh, 2016 and the rest of you are on Office 365, which means you have the latest version, that can cause some issues. It tends to be anyone below 2016 because all the new cool stuff came out with uh, Microsoft Office when they moved kind of more to 2019. So it could be some challenges around that. So that's another area that I would suggest checking. Um, if you're having collaboration, co-authoring, um, auto save issues. It, it's going to be around the word settings and versionings of Word, in my experience. All right, thank you. Um, a comment on this this content was great, but still a little confused how it integrates with Chorus, which I think you kind of showed a bit of there at the end. Yeah. But the comment continues in our Chorus instance, the SharePoint folder that Chorus creates for our pursuits is in a different SharePoint location than where our MS Teams files get created. So yep. we don't use MS Teams to manage our RFPs for this reason. Is there a way to link them so they go to the same place? And then, of course, we can follow up with uh, Jennifer who asked the question after if it's a little more extensive. Yeah, I think. Um, I I think that absolutely you could have them kind of share a space. It's something that your CSM would probably be able to advise you on. Um, it's just a matter of pointing chorus in the right direction. If it's a Teams environment or a SharePoint environment or a OneDrive environment, we can point there, consume or create uh, pursuits, etc. So definitely something that's possible, but probably needs a chat with your CSM. Okay, perfect. So for Jennifer, we'll get I'll get that question over to your CSM. Um, okay, so another question: Have you figured out workarounds for collaboration when track changes is on, or when people are making changes close to each other in a document? We encounter a ton of problems with some people using track changes and others not viewing in track changes and then inadvertently editing the text and Teams seems to not be able to handle the conflict and the data is lost. Is there a way to force people to work in the same track changes view? This is like a super user of, of Teams. For yeah, sure. that is a super user of Node. I mean, there's just so many thing, or so many questions I would ask. Um, again, we come down to the versioning. Track changes is different from version to version of Office, so I check that everyone's using the same version. Um, I would check the autosave as well. I would also maybe, um, you can implement a checkout, check-in policy where someone has to check the document out, work on it, check it back in before someone else can. Obviously that removes the co-authoring capability, but for, you can turn that on for certain files and for a certain period of time if you're having major challenges with the, with the file in particular. Uh, there's a lot of options. That's something that we'll need to troubleshoot um, I would recommend pinging out to our support desk. They've probably seen these challenges a million times as well. They might have some suggestions for you. 
Okay, so we'll also connect uh, Marianne, who asked that question, with her CSM. Sure. We also asked, where is the conversation button in the desktop app? I don't know if that's something you're able to so, show or speak so to. So there's not um, in the desktop app, and I, th I think I mentioned, you know, I prefer working in the desktop app, absolutely. Um, are, are you talking about the Teams desktop app? I think if you're talking about the Teams yeah. desktop app, um, it should be there when you open a document. So if you open a document in the desktop app, it should open in the same way that it does in the browser, and the conversation button will be on the top right. But you have to have a document open in order to see the, con the conversation button. If you're okay. talking about Word in, in, on the desktop, if you're opening the document up in Word, um, obviously you lose the ability to, to get to that conversation button because now you're out outside of Teams. So there's a bit of a, you got, kind of got to weigh up the, the pros and cons there. Um, and you can choose to use it you know, on, in Teams for one instance and open it up in the app in another when you want to do some more, I guess, heavy formatting or things like that. Perfect. And again, I'll send these questions to those folks CSM just in case they want to talk in some more sure. detail. Um, let's see. One other. If um, let's see. If I have, let's see. If we do, we have to get IT involved generally when we set something like this up, like some of the stuff that you showed us with Teams. So, if you have the ability today to create a team, then no you have everything you need um, to, to do this. I know some organizations uh, do disable the ability to create teams. Uh, I know our organization is one of them because we tend to create a team for absolutely everything and it kind of gets a little out of control. So we have only have certain people in our organization that are allowed to actually create a team. Um, but if you can do that today, then absolutely no need to get IT involved. And that's the beauty um, and I guess it's what Microsoft have intended, right, to, to empower business users to be able to take control of these kinds of things. So this is definitely something that you could do without IT, again, provided that you can create a team. Perfect. And then maybe we can just make a general note that a lot of the stuff that we covered today, if you're a customer of Chorus, as part of the implementation, we can help and everyone go through these details and just give them the tips and tricks on getting everything organized and set up properly um, because it was you know we shared a lot of details today yeah so I think with that our questions are answered of course you all can reach out to us anytime um, and then maybe Shay if you can flip to the next slide we'll just give folks the yeah. link we have a little QR code here we have put together an ebook basically covering what Shay has shared today in sort of a written form with some kind of screenshots in it that help you if you are a Teams-based organization to kind of think through how to use Teams. So you all are welcome to grab that piece. And then I know some of you have asked if we will be recording and sending this out, and we absolutely will. So anyone that um, registered or attended today, we will get you all the recording later because we know there's a lot of details in it. So. All right, well, with that, I wanna thank Shay so much for uh, joining us today and going through all of this content and for all of you who came on the call. And we look forward to seeing you all at our next webinar. Thank you yeah. so much, Shay. Thanks everyone, thanks for having me.